Hi, it's Kevin LaBates here, and this morning I've spent quite a bit of time thinking about financial institutions and the role of finance in the modern world. And the fact of the matter is we've built a society where we rely on banks in order to provide the rails, as it were, for trade and commerce and just general living. We have retail banks that allow ordinary citizens to store and access their money, receive their pay and um, pay for their shopping and things like that. And we have uh, the investment banks that uh, assist in the finance surrounding building new companies. We have central banks whose role is to um, control monetary policy in such a way that we don't have massive inflation or other financial problems that despite the fact that everything underlying society should be functioning okay doesn't because we're using the monetary system in order to keep the wheels turning as it were and uh, we've seen crisis after crisis after crisis in the financial system and people are starting to talk about how worried they are that yet another 2008 style crisis is looming on the horizon what with the effect of the pandemic and then the actions of various central banks in their monetary policy, particularly the US, in printing lots and lots of money. And this morning I read an article where a senior policymaker in the uh, Bank of England was worried that cryptocurrencies could be the trigger for the next collapse. And when I dug into the article, it boiled down to his concern being that cryptocurrencies are unregulated or not regulated very strictly and there's a risk that traditional financial institutions, the ones that as I mentioned we rely on in order to keep society functioning um, in a monetary sense, uh, might over leverage themselves and then if there was a collapse in the crypto markets they could be wiped out and then we would be faced yet again with a 2008 style bank bailout and ultimately the taxpayers presumably would be paying for that again and would have more austerity. So that's not going to be good for the average citizen. And there was a lot of hardship that uh, came from the previous austerity program. Um, now, my final conclusion on this was, well, why have we built a financial system where the only way to keep the traditional financial players from blowing themselves up is for them to be regulated and then bail them out if they find a way around the regulations. That doesn't really make much sense. If you applied that kind of uh, thinking to ordinary life, what we would be saying is that anybody could, on a whim, um, liquidate all their assets, take the huge pile of cash that they got from it, and go and put it all on number 17 on a roulette table in a casino in Mayfair. And then if they didn't win, well, we'd all pay for it. I mean, that doesn't make any sense really, does it? And yet, that's kind of what has happened in the traditional financial systems. So uh, the question there then is, well, what could we do to rebuild the financial systems we have in such a way that there was no need for regulation and there was no need to protect the rails of the system from this kind of a disaster from happening? If you were comparing it to a transport system, you're looking at building uh, a railroad rather than having lots of roads running everywhere and no speed limits and things like that. Um, so actually maybe that's not the greatest metaphor, but basically is there a way of automating all our payment systems and the way that we store financial assets and move them around in such a way that it's not possible for traditional financial players uh, who we rely on to provide these services to blow themselves up? could the risk be removed from the system uh, or rather the risk would still be there for people playing in the system but the system itself wouldn't stop running i.e a company can go or a bank can go and put all their money on number 17 on a roulette table they'll lose all their money but the roulette table will keep spinning and the rest of us will be okay um i don't know it seems like it might be science fiction and far-fetched maybe some of my viewers can uh, think of an example of a system like that that runs independently of a central controlling authority and allows a service to continue running despite the occasional mishaps of the individual parties who are participating in it. What do you guys think?